Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I would like to welcome you to the premiere episode of Let's Talk Film, a series where contemporary women get a chance to have their voices heard on the latest film releases. Today we are shooting at Madiba, the South African restaurant which was the first of its kind in the United States when it opened over 10 years ago. It pays homage to Nelson Mandela and is dedicated to the future of South Africa. This eclectic restaurant with its authentic cuisine is located in the colorful and world-renowned neighborhood of Fort Greene, Brooklyn. This is a neighborhood that's been compared internationally to Notting Hill in London and Les Marais in Paris. It has all of the necessary elements in place to emerge as one of the better big city neighborhoods on the planet for harmonious living. It is located here on DeKalb Ave between Adelphi Streets and Carlton Ave, a stone's throw away from the historic Fort Greene Park. Let's go inside. So, hey, Matt, thanks so much for doing this interview for Let's Talk Film. Tell me, what do you do here at um, Madiba? Madiba, I am a bartender, a server, and uh, pretty much do everything that needs to be done around here, yeah. Indeed. And can you tell us a little bit about the menu here at Madiba? Yeah, uh, it's South African cuisine, uh, which is a combination of a lot of different influences, actually, being a very diverse place, uh, European Mediterranean, African, and Indian as well. Wow. And uh, so there's a very diverse cuisine, and we try and have it all here. So. Now, is there anything that on the menu that's particularly your favorite that you recommend for people? Mm, I think everyone should try the mava pudding, which is our most popular dessert and uh, a, f a recipe of the owner's family, the now, classic here. What exactly is the mava pudding? Well, it's, uh, it's a baked pudding with uh, caramel, and uh, it's warmed in the oven, comes with some ice cream, and it's a secret recipe, so a lot of it I'm actually not allowed to divulge the information. Secrets. Well, thank you so yeah, much yeah. for this interview. No problem. I want to start by introducing our panelists. To my right is Lori Ponder. Next to her is Holly Harper. And last but never least, we have Janessa Olson. And today we're going to cover The Help, based on a book by Katherine Stockett and directed by Tate Taylor. Um, so this film has been marketed and described as several different things. I've heard it described as a comedy. I've heard it described as a drama. Uh, just in your perspective, what do you feel the film is actually, and how do you feel that it shapes its content? I'm not allergic to the term dramedy. Dramedy. I, I'm really not because yeah. I think that good drama will always provide some, a little comic relief when necessary. Otherwise it just becomes either melodrama or yeah. macabre. Right. And yeah. who, who needs that? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's not a comedy. No, of course not. Okay. It's a dramedy. Like yeah. I'm looking at it I'm like, that's like James L. Brooks. Mm -hmm. He makes exactly. dramedies. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, I think people don't know how to take that sometimes because they're like well we haven't seen that many that are successful but there is a you know whole line of people who can do that like Cameron Crowe yeah you know he can do dramedies James L. Brooks can do you know dramedies but I feel like uh, Mike Nichols and Mike Nichols those are about the three to be honest you know, but it's, <laughs> yeah but it's like you see the commercial and they got that feel good music it's always like 60s R&B you know yeah. right, right. Oh, right. Yeah. you know what I mean it's like ooh cool this jerk. is one of those yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're like oh you know they don't have like you know it's not I don't know, whoever's serious. Violins yeah. and uh, Wagner. Yeah, <laughs> it's not Nina Simone singing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, right, 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 it's right. not that kind of film. Right. So yeah, yeah, they yeah. have to have, and it's bright, and all the colors are bright. So they have to have that comedy just to, just to get the masses in there. Like, yeah. come on now, let's right. be real. Yeah. Especially right. moms right. and women, you know, you know, grown women, especially a lot of moms see that. Like, you don't yeah. really get to go out that often and... You're not going to go see some, you know, you want to see something funny. But yeah. I don't think it's a bait and switch. I don't think people would be oh, disappointed no, not at, all. at all. Not at all. Yeah. Indeed. You don't think they would be disappointed if, if, uh, if they thought, oh, this is a fun, high key, light, you know, uh, bright and funny comedy. I don't think yeah. that they're going to walk away feeling cheated. Uh, I think, if anything, they're going to walk away. Um, feeling like they got to experience something a little more complex yeah. Yeah. than um, an Apatow comedy I, I, or something I, like that. Yeah. yeah, it's not <laughs> marketed as a farce, you know, it's not the hangover, you know what I mean? No, yeah. no, no, no. And, and, and yeah. Um, I do find that 
female audiences are more capable of adapting to what's um, in front of them yeah. and, and going with it yeah. and, and embracing the complexity. So. See, I didn't, but I didn't feel, mm. that was not, I, I personally didn't have that reaction. Wow. I didn't, I, maybe I don't have the ability to really roll with it as well as some other women, but mm-hmm. I just. Did I you just, go in thinking it was a comedy? I guess I, No, no, oh, see, that's no, the thing okay. is the trailer, I don't feel like the trailer deceived me at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I got exactly what I expected. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I felt like it showed that there's going to be drama, but then they're going to, you know, relieve the drama with some some humor. Yeah. I just I I, I just felt like the this I just felt like some of the characters were just extremely stereotypical. I felt like mm. they fell into a category, and then Abelene was so multidimensional and she was so real that it made other characters like Holly Holbrook. I mean, fine, yes, we're we're portraying. White women yeah. in the '60s in mm. the South. Yes, there are stereotypes. I, I, I actually completely yeah. agree with you. A certain, with certain white type women. of white women, but I, I felt that it really played that to the extreme. To I, the I do. Yeah. It almost, it almost. Do you think it was the writing or the yeah. performance? Like, yeah. I had a concussion from getting hit over the head with, with. some of the the, the 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 categories. I don't even want to call mm-hmm. them stereotypes. It was like very categorical. And mm-hmm. then Octavia Spencer's character Minnie was hilarious. And yes. you could tell that she is a brilliant actress mm-hmm. and gave a brilliant performance. But I felt like some of the lines were just kind of like. So okay. it was more about the writing than versus um, I, I the do, performance. Yeah, I, I the really, I think that I really enjoyed the performances. I think the actresses mm-hmm. were spot yeah. on. I think that they give brilliant right. performances. And you know, I don't even think that the writing was bad. I think the writing was good. I just, right. I just feel like it's the context. I think it's kind of what the filmmakers were going for. Do it I dare say it might even have been the director? Who well, played well, those stereotypes because well, you know, they do tend to? I, I did a little uh, research on the film and the, and yeah. the director. This is his first feature film, uh. and he was a childhood friend of the writer, and oh, she stuck okay. by him. Um, and 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 you know, she she advocated for him even you know when the pressure was mounting from the studio. So that was really interesting to find out that this is his first right. feature, feature film. film. So I, I'm yeah. afraid I'm getting a producer vibe then. You know, those oh. old notes from the studio that yeah, say, and, and, "Hey, really drive that character." Yeah, home. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Studio, this exactly. is a mass marketed film yeah. by the studio. They're trying to hit as many. They of the tend four to like quadru- archetypes. Yeah, yes. they're trying to hit as yes. many of the four quadrants as possible. Yes. Like, come on now. And they don't trust think the intelligence of the audience. Of, exactly. I but think then, that that's really honestly, a Hollywood thing. Like, we always say we can't trust the intelligence. But after looking at America in the past three years, even with politics, oh I, my, I, I, no, we can't. I, no, I don't think we, we can't can. trust the intelligence of um, a lot of American people. I don't think we can. I want to build on that because I wanted one of the observations I made was something that. I feel we're seeing every day in the news, and that was um, there is a, a bit of a, a Christian leitmotif running through this film, mm-hmm. and I find that as in reality we have a group who are pious and Christian in name versus people who truly um, live their lives in, in a Christ-like Christian fashion yeah. as best they can. And so, anyway, I just feel it's very relative to today's current events. Well, it's so. like, who owns God, you know? Who <laughs> exactly. owns God? Right now, yeah. it's like God gets hijacked every two years, you know what I mean? So it's yep. kind of like, hmm. who owns God? Who People who love America, they hate Americans. And I think right now we are going through a, a phase of embracing stupidity and embracing ignorance. Oh, yes. And Hollywood has to respond. If they're going to make their dollar back... They're going to have to appeal to as many they're people as possible. Playing to the anti intellectual Well, they have to play to everybody. You know, they have yeah. to play yeah. to who's coming to see this film. And that's, yeah. that, I feel, is a big issue of that type of film and why I wouldn't normally uh, be drawn to a film like that because I, I feel like when you try to appeal to a broad audience, it ends up kind of um, diluted. Diluted, exactly. Yeah. And this um, in both senses of that word. And this oh, film, right. And, this, you know, um, <laughs> right. and, and, and I, I just I just feel like I'm having um, yes, um, this is a very uh, personal movie, and, I, and 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 they make it clear, you know, that that's what they're going. Yeah, for. here's an um, issue film, but we're gonna wrap it in some yeah, sugar so it won't be yeah. so terrible on its way down. You know, if it's gonna, you know, you have to wrap it a little bit of sugar. That, I mean, I think on, that that's like, the whole idea. I think what's going on is, uh, and we spoke about this earlier, um, but it is a film of relationships, yeah. and I think that that's really mm-hmm. what people are missing. This yeah. isn't about civil rights. This isn't about. No white versus versus black although it's present and it's there 
It's more about the relationships. It's how a story. people tell right. exactly. It's a story about a story. Right. And essentially that's the focus. The focus is the book. Right. You know, and how to get this book across and how to get these stories down and the importance of telling these stories and then everyone's reaction to these stories. Yeah. This is a great conversation. <laughs> I don't mean to cut it short, but we are out of time. No. Thank you so much to Mediva Restaurant. Thank you so much to Matt for helping us out. Thank you so much to our panelists for your great insight, great responses, great question, great conversation. This has been a great experience. And great coffee. And great, great, coffee. great coffee. Great, great coffee. coffie and Mediva. Great. Um, look forward to seeing you again on our next episode of Let's Talk Film. Thank you.